Everybody's Tyler here at Kalahari High School checking in with 1095R running back coming in out of California. What an incredible season so far for this team. Six wins uh, overall, an excellence award, a bunch of design awards as well too, and very well deserved. Take a look at this robot. I love Lobots in this game, but there's so much more to break down uh, with what they're doing. Awesome drive train we'll be talking about. We'll be going into trying to package for a robot like this and how you're gonna get that through. And I really like their intake, something they're doing a little bit more unique versus some of the other Lobots we've seen. Let's dive more into this robot. Everything entails coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Matthew, let's start out uh, from the bottom up talking about that drivetrain. You're doing a little bit of a unique motor config, uh, so walk me through what you're doing and uh, why you chose that route. So basically we have a seven motor drive here, 77 watts. We use six of the 11 watt motors and then two of the 5.5 watt motors here. And since these 5.5 watt motors only come in 200 RPM cartridges, we gear them a uh, three to one up here and then it connects to the rest of the drivetrain. Uh, we run a very fast uh, drivetrain at 600 RPM on 2.75 inch wheels. Um, this allows us to uh, maneuver the field really well and have awesome um, tri-ball control. In addition, we also have these two black flex wheels here that also help us climb the barrier uh, very effectively and smoothly. And as well as we have uh, double, uh, we have sleds on the front and then sleds on the back as well. So we can cross the barrier in both uh, directions as well. And then in addition, we also have these high strength axles here that provide um, protection for these 36 tooth gears and also allow, allows us to glide over the barrier easier. Yeah, with such a low CG that you're having, I think going over that barrier has just got to be so easy for you guys uh, overall. Um, looking at this overall gearing that you're doing, at what point did you choose something like this? Have you had this the whole season or when did you retool it? Uh, we used to have a six motor drive that was just um, actually geared 450 RPM on the same wheel size. However, we realized with the evolution of the game that we needed to control tri balls uh, more more quickly and therefore we changed to not only a faster uh, drive speed but one that has more torque and more pushing power so we can um, kind of push around robots and maneuver uh, our, ourselves throughout the field. One thing we really got to highlight is that drop down intake and Michael's going to be talking more about what goes into that. You know we've seen uh, a couple other Lobots that we've had on Pits and Parts before. Uh, we've seen a, kind of a different uh, intake set for each one. This might be the first I've seen where you're having the type of intake that you have. So talk to me more about what makes it unique and how did you even come up with doing this for an intake as well? Yeah so this intake we want, uh, we knew when we built the spot we wanted to have an active roller because it's so good at intaking the balls off the field and even stealing balls from other teams. So. Uh, to do this and have it fit under the goal, we um, did a thing where we can move the hard stop. So basically, this piston is connected on a zip tie, which is um, then um, connected to the intake. So it can pivot up and down. So when this piston retracts, um, the intake will go up. And this will function now like a normal intake. So you have all your intaking. You have all your intaking. And then when you shove in the goal, it shoves uh, just normally. And what's good about this is it can freely pivot up and down, just like a normal intake. All right, when you start the match, are you starting with that intake up and then it drops down, or like, how do you actually make sure you're within your frame compliance? Um, so actually, when the intake is down, we because this robot is so small, we still fit in size. Oh, nice. That's really cool. Um, more to talk about on this robot, it's going to be that ear, that A tier hang uh, that you're doing as well too. Bobby's going to be uh, running through that. I like that you got some versatility with this as well. And when we were talking earlier, it's very important on the position of this based on your CG as well. Yeah, so one of our main goals with this robot was to keep our center of gravity as low as possible. And because we're a six inch robot, that wasn't too hard to do. It was kind of forced on us by the design requirements of going under the goal. Um, but this created another issue. So we built this robot pretty quickly, so we wanted to get like a C tier or a D tier climb maybe, but we didn't have uh, quite the time to do it. So we decided on going with an A tier balance. 
And the idea for this was for it to be like a quick and efficient A tier balance. But when we first put on a balance climb, we put it on about right here. And um, if you think about it, this, the CG is about right here in the middle of the robot so that we can have the double sleds. But when you put the balance climb so close to the pivot point, it has to be like extremely precise or it kind of just slides off and it doesn't really work. We also have these boats in the middle of here, the high strength axle boats, and the flex wheels are too far spread apart for us to get a perfect balance climb. So keep that in mind when you're building your drive that these slide around a little bit. So what we decided to do is, since we couldn't balance easily because the pivot point was so close to the CG, we decided, well, what if we could just lift up the back of our robot? And the way we do this is with these two vertical wings here. So um, if you put the bar down, or if you line up next to the vertical pole and you put these down, we have them on both sides, the same button. So he just has to press one button. This actually just props up the back of the robot and it gives us our A tier. That's really cool. At uh, what point did you end up making those modifications uh, for this robot? So uh, last weekend we had a tournament and we ran the balance climb and I think we hit it only like one time out of all of our matches so that wasn't too great. So we decided immediately to sort of re revamp this uh, balance climb. So this was, we added this like a couple days ago. And how's it been working out so far here at uh, um, We're hoping it's going to work for the rest of the day. All right, continue improvement process, got it, no worries. Uh, Anish, I gotta ask you in regards to the packaging of this robot here, having such a small robot overall, you're fitting so much into that space. When you're looking at designing uh, this robot, talk to me about your CAD work for it and how did you figure out how to get all that packaging done in such a small space? Yeah, so f we try to have almost all the functionalities of a regular robot in this space. A regular VEX robot typically has to be 18 inches tall. In this game, most robots are below 11 inches tall because of the horizontal bar. But our robot has to be half of that with six inches. So there are a lot of challenges with that. As Michael explained earlier, the intake was probably the hardest thing, but coming up with this design makes it work pretty well. But you can also see a lot of other compromises, or not really compromises, but more like um, adjustments made so that we fit under that six, in six inch limit. For example, these two climb C channels, we would have liked them to be longer, so you'd have more breathing room, but they could only be this tall because you need to fit under six inches. Um, another thing you'll notice is that um, we, have, we have two tanks in this robot. You can only see one right now. So if I flip this over, can you do it? You can see one more tank down here. Um, this being super low, it's also really great for a center of gravity, and it's really uh, compact. We actually run one tank separately just for a climb, so that um, it always has 100 PSI at the end of the match. Um, also, you can see our battery is right here. Um, it's also really great for a center of gravity, held in by these zip ties and a high strength axle right here. Um, another thing, you'll, speaking of high strength axles, another, another thing you'll notice is that we use a lot of them throughout our robot to mount stuff. So we had the one down there to mount the battery. We also have one running all the way through here that mounts both our brain and our wing pistons. Um, they take up a lot less space than C channels and they're just really useful, also really strong. Um, Another thing we have is that our wings, in order to fold in completely and to stay as thin as possible, we have these cutouts right here so that they don't hit anything on our drive. So it can fold all the way flush in and it works perfectly. Somebody asking when we were talking about earlier, you do CAD up your robot and inventory as well too. How important, how important is it for your team to do CAD prior to actually doing the manufacturing on your bot? Yeah, so especially for a six inch bot, we think it would be almost impossible to build it without CAD. You need to fit all of these things within such a small area. Um, in CAD, actually, what I did is I made like a little box that I had to fit the whole robot in, and um, it really helped me keep everything in check and make sure we would uh, reach our requirement. So to wrap on this robot, talking about Matt's strategy a little bit, Joseph, and uh, how was your team? Uh, give me a couple like big strategies that has been working out well for your team, uh, and has that changed over the course of the meta of the game as well? Yeah, so this robot was designed for a rapidly evolving match strategy. As the season progressed, we started to see less and less match loading, and we eventually realized that the if the more the teams match load, the less of the eight cords actually end up in the goal. So we started to shift with thinking, how could we make sure that all of our match loads could end up in the opponent's goal? So we started design this robot in mind for a one by one strategy where Matthew, our driver, would drive up onto the barrier and we would feed an acorn into the intake and then he would instantly drive back and soar to the goal and repeat. 
So the thing about this strategy is it's all about the cycle time. So before we had a robot that could do it all. We had a C-tier climb, we had an elevated shooter, and we were trying to make it unblockable. But what we eventually realized that by doing all this, all we really needed was an intake and a fast drive base. So with this robot, we were designing it to be super light. We cut almost eight pounds from our previous oh, design. Yeah. And that's been working out super well for us so far. And it's just all about cycle times now. Well, we can't wait to see how you do here at Kalahari. Team's been looking awesome so far, so good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for taking time to tell us about this awesome robot. And can't wait to see how you do the rest of the season as well, too, guys. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.